So you've clicked on this video because maybe you're still finding multiplying and dividing with fractions a bit tricky. Perhaps you keep forgetting the method that your teachers have told you. Or maybe you haven't learned it yet and you're trying to get a head start. Well, listen, this is the video for you. But I'm not just going to dive into straight into the abstract where we just look at some fractions and go, this is the rule. I'm just going to take you on a small journey where we get to understand the concepts first. So bear with me and um, follow me on this journey. So let's go right back for one second just to remind ourselves and explore what this symbol means, this multiplication symbol, because I would say 3 times 18. But many of you might also say it means 3 lots of 18, and this lots of being a really key bit of language. 3 lots of 18. I've got 18 three times. And let's just remind ourselves that multiplication is commutative, and that means we can switch the numbers around. 3 lots of 18 does give the same answer as 18 lots of 3, as you can see from my visual. Okay? So first of all, we need to understand that. Now, secondly, what if I replace one of my numbers with a fraction? I've now got this number sentence, 18 lots of a half. It's still doable, isn't it? Because every two halves makes a whole. So I've gone ahead and put two halves together, and I've made sure that there are 18 halves here. And 18 halves, if you count this up in twos, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, there's 18 halves there, makes just 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 holes. So the answer to that question is 9. So interestingly, 18 lots of a half ends up being the same as 18 divided by 2, right? And that's a key fact for later on, so hold that there. 18 lots of a half. And of course, for good measure, just remember we can switch these numbers around. 18 lots of a half is the same as half lots of 18. But at this point, the, the phrase lots of sounds a bit strange to me. And what I'm going to do when, I, when I'm working with fractions like this, rather than saying half lots of 18, I'm just going to say half of 18. And hopefully you're now making that link as to why sometimes people see the multiplication symbol as the word of. And in some other videos, I mention it like that as well. I say, oh, times means of. Well, now you know why. That's where it comes from. It comes from the whole lots of phrase. So really, this question, half times 18, to me, just says half of 18, which is very clearly 9. Okay, next step. What if I replace the second number with a fraction as well? Let's read it out using our language of of, okay? So this question to me says half of 3 quarters. And if you really think about that, that's not as tricky as it seems at first, because we can represent three quarters in a bar like this. So here's my bar. This bar represents one whole, and I split it into four pieces. So I split it into quarters, each of these parts being worth one quarter. And I've sh uh, shaded in, in yellow, three of them. So I've represented here three quarters. Everyone happy with that? Now, I'm trying to find a half of three quarters. So I want half of this part that's shaded in yellow. But obviously there's three pieces making this, so it's kind of hard to split it in half using the, the lines given. So actually half would be sort of down here, wouldn't it? Down the middle there. And this would be half, and this would be half. But how do I say that as an answer? So here's my half. This is, this is my answer right here. I'm highlighting in with a red box. But how do I say that? Do I say a quarter and a half? That, that's not language I should be using. Well, here's what we should do. If I've just split one of my quarters into two pieces, then I should do the same to all of my quarters so that I've got equal sized pieces across my whole. And actually, by doing that, I've turned my whole into eighths now. There are eight pieces instead of four. Now I can describe how much of this whole is half of three quarters. You can very clearly see that if each of these is now an eighth, my answer to this question is one that uh, is three eighths does that make sense so half of three quarters is three eighths my other three eighths which makes uh, the other quarter is here okay pretty cool let's have a look at um the same question but swapped around so half of three quarters remember is the same as three quarters of a half so i can just very quickly show it here again so if i want to find three quarters of this half i'm going to split my half into quarters, so I split it into four pieces. Of course, I have to do the same to the other piece, otherwise I've now got uneven sized pieces, my fraction's not gonna work properly. So what I've done here is actually, I've taken the two pieces and I've split them both into four. So two times four is, 
I've now got eight pieces. It's very interesting that we had two times four here. And um, I want to show three quarters of a half, so I'm going to shade in three of them, which I can put on my next slide here. Three of them. And funnily enough, we've split it into eight pieces again, and I've shaded in three of them. We've got the same answer. Of course we have, because we know that with multiplication, you can switch the numbers or the fractions around. It's the same thing. Let's look at one more visual example, and then we're going we're gonna to generalize this into a rule that works every single time. And maybe you can see it just from that question alone. Here we go. Three-fifths of one quarter. So I've, I've shown one quarter here of my whole, and I've colored it in yellow. I want to have three-fifths of this. To find three-fifths, I would, of course, have to divide this into five equal pieces, which means I have to do the same to all of them as well. And if I've got four... Um, original boxes all split into five pieces four times five I'm gonna have 20 pieces here right this is going to be in uh, 20ths now and of course I'm gonna to want to shade in three-fifths of one of the quarters and it will look a bit like this so my answer to this question is my denominator is now 20 because I split all four into five four times five is 20 and I wanted three-fifths of just one of the quarters, so I've got three-twentieths as, as my answer. Now, hopefully, some of you are looking at that and thinking, huh, it happened again. Once again, we could just do the numerator times the numerator to get the new answer, and we could just do the denominator times the denominator to get the new denominator answer. Is that a coincidence? No, it works every single time. So now you've understood the concept and the idea of of, of multiplication being of, we can solve these kind of questions really quickly. They're probably, probably the easiest fractions questions to solve because the rule is simply this. Multiply the numerators together. Three times two is six. Multiply the denominators together. Four times five is 20. And that is the answer. That's it. So have a go at the next two. See if you can beat me to it. What would this one be? Let's think. Four times two is eight. This is where time tables comes in handy. 9 times 12 is 108. That's the answer. Could it be simplified? Yes, but we'll talk about that in another time because this is an acceptable answer. You don't need to simplify it to get your mark in the SATS arithmetic paper. Final one, 7 times 1 is 7 and 10 times 2 is 20. It really is as simple as that. So I could have jumped straight to that, guys, but I wanted you to understand why that works and hopefully it will help you remember to do this every single time. Let's have a look at just two questions from the actual SAT. So this one was from the 2023 arithmetic paper, and I want you to solve it. Pause the video, come back when you've, when you've done the answer. So using my rule of multiply the numerators, I'm going to get 10 as a numerator, and multiply the denominators, 7 times 9 is 63, and that's it. That would get you one mark, done, you can move on. How cool is that? Here's another one that came up in the 2017 paper. So going back some years now, again, pause the video, solve it, come back. Multiply the numerators, four times three is 12. Multiply the denominators, six times five is 30. Done, look at that, a free mark. Easy, right? It's literally free to me because it's so quick. You can just solve those every single time. Some children would then look at this and try and simplify it, which can be done if you were thinking about simplifying it. You don't need to do that to get the mark. All this might do is open up you making a mistake and then not getting the mark. So just leave the fraction as it is and you'll get the mark. So that's it. Multiplying fractions nice and easy. Let's move on to dividing fractions. And there's a really big reason I did multiplying fractions first. So stick around in this video and you'll see why dividing fractions is very closely linked to multiplying fractions the way I teach it. So earlier on, we, we, um, we established this, didn't we? We established that half of 18 or 18 times a half however you say it, is, is the same as just dividing 18 by 2. So there's a really interesting link there. Is that, is that random, do you think? Do you think that 2 was just a coincidence? I don't know. Let's have a look. 18 times a half is the same as 18 divided by 2. It's not a coincidence. So using the same logic, what do you reckon 18 divided by 6 is the same as timesing by? It is a fraction. So 18 divided by 2 was the same as timesing by a half. 18 divided by 6 is the same as timesing by a sixth. Okay, that's not a coincidence. That is how it works. So if I flip my whole number into a fraction by putting one above it, it's this and, and you multiply instead of divide, it's actually the same question. That's really cool. So let's just explore that a bit more. If I was given the question 40 divided by five, that is the same as 40 multiplied by a fifth. 
I'd obviously choose the first one, but for the sake of learning that you need to understand that that's the same thing. Help me out here, guys. 16 divided by four is gonna be the same as 16 multiplied by a quarter. That number just gets flipped into a fraction. Can you do the last two? If you need to pause the video, you can, but I'm gonna go through them. 32 divided by eight is the same as 32 multiplied by one eighth. Flipped my number into a fraction. And the final one, completely blank, can we solve it? Can we write the same thing? 12 divided by three is the same as 12. I'm gonna multiply, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna change my operation into multiply, and I'm gonna flip my number into a fraction by putting one above it. It's the same as 12 times a third. Bear with me, guys, we're gonna get there. We're nearly at the dividing fractions bit. All of this is key to understanding. So one last bit, just to make it really clear, these are the same. Dividing by three, timesing by a third. Dividing by six, timesing by a sixth. Dividing by five, timesing by a fifth. So what if my first number, unlike before where we had whole numbers, 40, 16, 32, what if my first number in these calculations was a fraction? Have you realized that we can turn this into a multiplying fractions question? Because do you know what we do? We take the first number, we leave it the same. We can switch, we can change our division into a multiplication symbol and we can flip our number into a fraction and we know that it will give the same answer. And didn't we just learn how to multiply fractions really easily? Yes, we did. You just multiply the numerators, multiply the denomin denominators. So the answer to this original question here, one fifth divided by three is the same as one fifth times a third which I know gives me an answer of one times one is one, five times three is 15. And that's the answer. That's pretty cool, right? So let's try it again. Three sevenths divided by six is the same as three sevenths times a sixth, multiply the numerators, multiply the denominators. Awesome, that's the answer. One more time, let's do this. Eight thirds, and don't worry that it's an improper fraction. It still works. It doesn't matter that we've got a larger numerator than denominator. It just means it's over one whole. It's an improper fraction. Eight thirds divided by five is the same as eight thirds multiplied by a fifth. Eight times one is eight. Three times five is 15. How cool is that? So we can turn dividing fractions questions into multiplying fractions question. I quite often with my year six classes, I will uh, teach them this little acronym here, KCF, which stands for keep, change, flip. And the way they understand that is you keep the first fraction as it is, you change the operation into its opposite, multiplication, and you flip the number into a fraction by putting a one above it. And then you just multiply the fractions. So keep, change, flip. If that helps you, I'd recommend writing that down somewhere. It might be the thing that helps you remember this forever. How cool is that? Now, I've got one more slide before we before we look at some SATS questions where you don't need to use that method all the time when dividing a fraction by a number. You can look for a shortcut. Now, if this confuses you, pause, go back a step and stick to what we just learned. But if you're happy with that understanding, this is a bit of advanced knowledge for you to speed you up. If I've got eight tenths divided by two, if I can divide the numerator by the number, then I can just do that and keep the keep the denominator the same. I'd like you to think of eight tenths as a thing. I think of it as eight people. Eight people divided by two is four people, right? The tenths, the people doesn't change. So because I can do eight divided by two, my answer is very simply four tenths. Okay, eight divided by two is four. Same with this one, look, 10 25ths divided by five. Well, 10 divided by five is two, so it's just two twenty-fifths. You've got to see the denominator as, as a noun, like a thing, okay? I've got 10 of them. If I divide by five, I've got two of them. Same with this one. I've got seven of these things that happen to be eighths, and I divide by seven. Well, seven divided by seven is one. So now I've got one of these things, which happens to be eighths. So always look for shortcuts in the questions, guys. Sometimes you can't divide the numerator. In fact, most of the time you can't divide the numerator by the number, and you have to use our lovely keep, change, flip method, but you will get the same answer. You might find that this answer is a more simplified version of the answer, but it is the same answer nonetheless. I'll just quickly prove that to you. If I use my keep, change, flip, I'll keep this the same, change this into a multiplication, flip this into a fraction. Eight times one is eight, 10 times two is 20. And you might think, be thinking, oh, there's a different answer, but actually they are the same fractions. They are equivalent because if I divided the top and the bottom by two, 
you can see that that's actually an equivalent fraction. So do look for shortcuts if you can. Let's have a look. How has this come up in the SATs then? So in the 2023 paper, this was a question. One eighth divided by three. Use the keep change flip method. Uh, pause the video. And what do you get? Let's do it. Keep change flip. So keep, change that, flip that. One times one is one. Eight times three is 24. Done. Answer. Next one. This was also in the 2023 paper. So you can see it's more, uh, it comes up more than times in fractions. So pause the video. What's the answer? Here we go. Keep the first fraction. Change to a multiplication. Flip it into a fraction. One times one is one. Three times six is 18. So simple. Guys, 2022 paper. Off you go. Keep the fraction the same change it into multiplication, flip the number into a fraction. One times one is one, eight times two is 16. There's the answer. Think about this. Would you be getting loads of marks really easily by doing this? Okay, think carefully about this one. Off you go. As a good mathematician, I'm always looking for shortcuts. And I noticed that this time, four divided by four is actually something I can do. It's just one. So four fifths divided by four is just one fifth. Okay, so well done if you got that one. If you did the keep change flip method, you still get the mark. You can do this. Keep change flip. Four times one is four. Four times five is 20. You'll notice that they are the same fraction. They're just equivalent. All right, so either of those answers would get, would get you the mark. All right. So guys, I'm going to leave you there. I've got four questions for you to have a go at. Please leave me a comment uh, in the comment section down below. I've got two multiplying fractions questions and two dividing fractions questions. Hopefully you find this nice and easy. If you like this video, if you found that in just 16, 17 minutes, that this really, really helped you understand something that maybe you've been trying to learn for weeks or even months at school, then please let us know down below and do share this video with your friends. And of course, we'd love it if you subscribed. See you next time.